Yes, you read that title correctly. Batman's most biggest fan is his most powerful enemy. Joker, Riddler, the Court of Owls, Bane. None of them stand close to the power of this imp from the fifth dimension. Get ready because this is Batmite Explained. Imposing, but too Dracula. Batmite's an imp from the fifth dimension that first appears in Detective Comics 267. This imp first let it be known that he is Batman's biggest fan. When he first appeared, Bruce speculated him to be some random elf with a Batman costume. But Batmite immediately corrects them on this. He explains how he comes from another dimension and he's been watching Batman for years to come. And now he's here to help Batman with his immense powers. But Batmite's way of helping and having fun with the Cape Crusader is a bit dangerous. You see, Batmite came down to Earth to become a trio with Bruce and Robin. But they deny him because him as a creature is unusual. After this, Batman and Robin do their crime fighting business and Batmite leaves. But he didn't actually leave, he just went invisible on Bruce's car. Now when Batman's about to catch the criminals he's chasing, the bridge that they're on starts shaking. Making Bruce and Robin do much more physical activities to defeat the enemy. And then it's revealed this was all all part of Batmite's plan. Now this is an important factor of Batmite's character. When Bruce is finishing a job too easily, his biggest fan will up the competition with some type of obstacle, which not only helps Batman perform better feats, but also brings fun and entertainment to Batmite. Here is a perfect example of this. World's Finest Issue 113 So just like Batman having a fan from the 5th dimension, so does Superman. His name, Mr. Mixius Pitalik. And in this comic, these two have a crossover. Now the aspect that I want to look at in this story is when robots were taking over the city, and of course, Batman and Robin are trying to take them down. Now Clark sees that they're struggling and he gets a rock to try and destroy the robots. And of course, Batman intervenes. He matter manipulates the rock into a comic figure so Superman can't take down the robots. Batmite explains he did this because he wants Batman and Robin doing the best feat so Superman can't intervene. I mean the little guy admires Bruce so much he thinks anything Superman can handle Batman can too. Now after this Mr. Mixius Pitalik appears and him and Batmite have a fight off. Now it ends in a stalemate with Mixie admitting their relative and at the very end of the comic we see Batmite admit he's gonna always help Bruce get his best feats. I also want to know Batmite is only referencing anytime he interacts with Bruce. Now why do I consider Batmite a enemy? Although he has good intentions, anytime he does them it always ends up dangerous. So I wouldn't consider him somebody like the Joker or Bane, but his attraction for Bruce does make him a threat sometimes. Now even though Batmite's a imp from the fifth dimension, that doesn't mean his life is easy. His plane still has sinister activity, and the villain I'm talking about is the most darkest and evilest Bane might. So to understand Bane Might, we first have to understand the Might Dimension. We first get an explanation on the Might Dimension in Legends of the Dark Knight issue 38. Essentially, Batmite captures this drug addict and shows him the Might Dimension. First, he explains Batmite got his name because he constantly watches over Bruce and Windows. But then we see his hometown is filled with heroes parallel to the regular ones, as well as villains. Robin Might, Joker Might, Catwoman Might, Penguin Might, even reenacting the hero vs villain idea. But it's not limited to just that, we also see cosmic beings, such as the Spectre Might, and even the Endless when we see the Sandman Might or Death of the Endless Might. And there is many many more to go through. But nonetheless, what we came here to look at is the main villain Bane Might. Bane Might was originally born inside of a cage tortured with ice water every single day. And every single year on his birthday, he'll be transported to an even bigger cage. Now through this act of torture, Bane Might's only option was to get stronger, but he also grew a ton of hatred. Now how does any of this connect to this guy being the main villain? Well this all begins in Batman Might Fall. Might Fall is a direct continuation of when Batmite showed the drug addict the Might Dimension. Essentially, Bane and the rest of Batmite's rogue gallery from the 5th Dimension broke out of the Arkham Asylum from the 5th Dimension. Yeah, the 5th Dimension is very parallel to the regular Earth. Now while Batmite is taking his rogues back to Arkham Asylum, Bane Might takes advantage of this and amplifies himself with Toxic. Yeah, here in the 5th Dimension, they don't call it Toxin, they call it Toxic. You know, after this amplification, he was also getting amped by his 
hatred for the world and he had a master plan to take over the universe so he goes back to his might dimension starts beating up all the heroes and even when the superman mites try to take him down he punches them through time and black holes now bane might was eventually defeated when bat might created a overbat suit for the drug addict and he defeated him so now that we got the whole might dimension and their most powerful villain explained i want to tap into the sheer power of bat might because that's kind of the whole point of this video one perfect example of this would be in scooby-doo team up issue 99 batman is yet again fighting crime this time with the gang as normal mysterious activity is the situation at hand batman is chasing after one of his villains and the scooby-doo gang helps them but what even radar them to go to gotham in the first place is because there was a tweet by robin a tweet which robin never made so he just assumed he was hacked until we see multiple iterations of batman and multiple iterations of scooby-doo now at first i thought this was just another bad might shenanigans but then we see it's much more and the answer is revealed to us by velma and batman after Velma and Bruce figure out the strange activity, they call the person out on it. And at that point, we see it was Batmite and Scooby Mite. Yeah, so Scooby Doo also has his own fifth dimensional imp because he fanboys over Scooby Doo, just like Batmite fanboys over Batman. So the reason why Batmite and Scooby Mite are here is to celebrate the anniversary of Batman meeting the gang. So the imps first show off their power by teleporting other iterations of Scooby and Batman from other universes to their universe, transporting the candy versions of the characters and even teleporting the DC writers into their world with a snap. After this, they say the possibilities are endless. They can bring an infinite amount of Scooby-Doo's to this world and erase them from that plane just as easily. Now after this, Batmite and scooby might thought of a great idea and teleport all the well-known iterations of Scooby-Doo. We have the live action form, which is from the 2002 Scooby-Doo movie. The classic form, which is from, you know, the original animated series. The garbage reboot from Cartoon Network, which nobody likes. And what I'm trying to get at is that basically this guy can access other universes other networks like cartoon network and just bring you to his universe and then just remove you when he wants to it's bfr hacks that work on a multiversal scale and this is still nothing close to the bigger feats that batmite has done now at this part in the video i really want to go into the aspect of meta now if you don't know what meta is it's basically a word to portray characters interacting with our reality characters like deadpool whom are popular representatives of this concept do stuff like break the fourth wall oh oh hello i know right Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? Now, something like breaking the fourth wall is a very simple and basic way of metafiction. And even one may argue it's not that powerful, it's kind of just like a hyper awareness. But Batmite's meta feats are far higher than just simply talking to the readers. I mean, we can start off very basic and simple. Let's take a look at Detective Comics issue 482. Now in this story, we jumpstart with Batmite being used as a conduit to express what happens in the narrative. Now after this, Batmite goes to the DC offices and starts writing his own script to tell the writer to make him a comic with Batman. Now Batmite proceeds to outline his own story and then teleports all the things necessary to make a DC story, like the artists, the writers, the producers, everyone, and then forces them to write this story for him while threatening them with Mr. Mixie as Pitalik. Because you know, this guy Mr. Mixie was punching writers if they didn't listen to his commands. Another really quick example of Batmite's metafiction is Ambush Bug issue 3. Now it's essentially Ambush Bug going through the history of the universe, going through continuity, and when he meets Batmite, he not only shows that he's narratively aware of his appearances, but all the retcons that the writers did to Batman. And he also shows that he's dating Starmite, which is Starfire from the 5th dimension now there's more quick examples when he does these minor fourth wall breaks but i want to get into the more profound feats and i think we should begin in the 2019 superman slash batman annual one now this story starts with young imps playing with batman and superman toys until they start fighting over who would win between the two now mixie explains to them how are you supposed to learn how to manipulate the fabric of time and space if you can't even share and this is nothing new mixie and batman are very well known for manipulating all of time and space 
space. Now after, Mixie tells him that Superman would obviously be Batman, but Batmite disagrees heavily. Now they can't convince each other, so they decided to become the writer and create a story on how either or would win. So Batmite begins first for us, he flips the comic page to a setting where the multiverse is getting destroyed. Now Batmite decided to make the multiverse get destroyed because Superman is an anomaly, and now Batmite is trying to kill Superman because of this and Superman is deflecting all his contingencies until Batman kills him with a gigantic red sun. Now Mixie heavily disagrees with this writing because the red sun would not only kill the world but also kill Batman so it's not even a win. Now Mixie begins to edit the plot with Superman just chasing after Batman. Now they were once in the Batcave but Mixie didn't like that so he altered the plot once again to a different setting being in the Fortress of Solitude. Now Bruce and Clark start to realize these narrative changes and even feel like they're being controlled to kill each other. And at that point Mixie was pretty mad. He writes himself inside the story, tells Batman he's a cheater and writes Superman to kill him. Now this really sets Batmite off because Mixie copied his method of killing and they essentially are ended up in a tie so they need a tiebreaker and ask the kids who wins. But the kids didn't care so they ask the action figures. So we then see these action figures are actually sentient and they respond by saying nobody won. And Bruce then tells Mixie that the stories were rigged from the start so it doesn't even count. So Mixie gets mad at Bruce so he rips him apart which makes Batmite mad so he rips up Clark apart and then send the two back to their home dimension. Mention. And it's then revealed that this was the actual Superman and Batman transformed into action figures by cosmic gods for their playground. Which is very impressive because Superman fights against multiversal beings all the time, and Batmite just turning him to action figures like it's nothing. Now, this isn't the only time these guys have shown to have plot manipulation. Mr. Mixie is Pitalik, somebody who is equal to Batmite, has done it many more times. So, although this isn't a direct Batmite feat, you can still apply it to him because they're equals. This feat is very direct and portrays the concept perfectly. And this all begins in Batman slash Superman issue 22. Now Batman slash Superman issue 22 is very meta. I mean we immediately start with Calendar Man being teleported to the 5th dimension and then Mr. Mixie gives him the ability to jump through panels. Here's a great example of what I'm talking about. As we can see here he's fighting a criminal then next thing you know he's looking at the other side of the comic and he sees the Fortress of Solitude. Taking advantage of this he jumps across the page and sneaks up on Batman and Superman leaving them in confusion. Punching him where he came and see him and then forcing Superman to attack his future self in the next panel. Now the most important thing that I want to look at is that Mr. Mixie gives him a pen. Now with this pen he's able to easily configure the story. As we see here he draws an X and then the Batarang disappears. Now Calendar Man is eventually defeated when he accidentally draws off his arm with the pen. But we still see at the end of the story Mixie standing outside the panels and essentially becoming a writer. And at the very end he yells at us for even reading the stories because we know that Batman and Superman are always gonna win. Now I want to take a look at two more instances that involve Batmite and Mr. Mixie. And why not begin with our first one being the journey to the sixth dimension. Now the journey to the sixth dimension is a humongous arc that portrays a bad side of Mr. Mixie. What I mean by this is that we usually see Mr. Mixie messing with Superman and that's it. But this run takes the character in a more cosmological perspective. For some really fast context, Mr. Mixie's working for somebody called the World Forger and his mission is to erase the entire multiverse. Mixie first destroys the Justice League Tower and goes through such a powerful state where he takes over the writer's pencil and erases existence. Existence. The totality of the multiverse was getting undone by Mr. Mixie. So things like the entire speed force, every lantern ring combined, and many other powerful forces are now on the breach of annihilation. And the smartest beings in the universe claimed that Mixie had no limits to his power. So they had to get another imp who had no limits to their power as well, and I think we know who that is. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Batmite. Now Batmite also gets in this really powerful state as well, and they go pure relative. Now eventually with the added on power from the rest of the team they were able to defeat him. But it goes to show how powerful Batmite is going relative to a god who is going to erase everything. Now the next instance I'm going to talk about it wasn't as successful because they were teaming up. And this comic is world's funnest. Now what really sparks these guys to go off in this comic is when Batman and Superman catch criminals. Now out of nowhere they both break free and Batman and Superman have to do activities to stop them. And now after this it's revealed 
Bad Might and Mixie were involved in this, but they both begin to argue over who made their hero do more work. And after that, it gets a bit out of hand. Mixie accidentally kills Batman in front of Batmite, and then it all goes downhill from there. Batmite kills Superman, the League tries to stop them, then Mixie just solos the whole League. And although these guys are relative, Mixie gets angry. They both begin to grow larger than the entire Earth, and then fight with it. Eventually, the Spectre tries to stop them, one of the strongest beings in DC, and then he gets one shot. They begin to play with whole galaxies and rip apart the entire universe. They blow up the Phantoms, in a plane beyond the concepts of space and time, then go to the fifth dimension where Mixie one shots the place, and they're still not done having fun. Back at Apocalypse, where Darkseid's getting ready to start war, Mixie and Bat might pull up. Darkseid tries to Omega Beam them, doesn't work, and then they blow up the entire realm, including Darkseid, destroying heaven, the entire sphere of gods, claiming that the multiverse isn't big enough for them. They travel to the real world, and then Mixie gets so mad that he one shots the totality of everything leaving only Batmite and Mixie the only people in existence. Now after this, they end up remaking everything and plan on doing the same thing next Tuesday, but I want to talk about something. Now although I don't necessarily agree with this, the author has stated that when Mixie obliterated everything, this was in reference to all of DC, like every single DC character was erased by Mixie. So yeah, if you take it at a grain of soul, it really shows how powerful these two imps really are. And I think that's it for Batmite, definitely one of the crazy sides of DC. Batmite's also pretty powerful in the animated series too, he's rebooted the whole thing, but this video's revolved around comics and that should be it.